What's not to love about the nine patch? It's easy to piece and fun to quilt. And in this video, I'm gonna give you some of my favorite designs for quilting the nine patch. I'm Angela Walters from Quilting Is My Therapy. And welcome to the first week of the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along. Help, how do I quilt it? I hope you're excited to get started because I'm gonna share some of my favorite quilting designs for some common quilt blocks. In week one, we're gonna start off with the nine patch. In this video, we're gonna learn three different designs. First, we'll learn a design to be used in nine patches of all different sizes. Then, we'll create some quilting magic by using the quilting to turn the block into a different shape. Last, we'll get diagonal with the quilting to create an effect that'll help move your eyes along the quilt. So, let's get started. When quilting nine patch blocks with two different colors of fabric, I love to use contrasting designs to really show that off. For one color, I'll use a continuous curve. And then I'll combine it with a contrasting straight line to quilt an X. The best part, I can do the whole block without starting and stopping. I'm gonna quilt a line that curves from one corner of the center block to the next corner. And that's gonna be the transition that I need to get into the orange block in the corner. In that block, I'm gonna quilt the continuous curve design, and that's gonna bring me back to my starting point. Before I move on, however, I'm gonna go ahead and quilt and put a diagonal line from one corner to the next. I'm gonna have to incorporate a little traveling so I can do the other side of my X. But once I have my block quilted, I'm gonna travel along the seam to get back to my inner square so I can continue the next part of the continuous curve in that block. And I'm gonna repeat the same design in the next orange corner block, quilting that line that curves from point to point to point. I'm focusing on the corners of the block. If I can get that line to come somewhat close to the corners, it's gonna look perfect even if it's not symmetrical. And now it's time to go back to the X's, quilting an X in that white square. Travel, another diagonal line to the other side, a little bit more stitching in the ditch, and I can continue on to the next square. There's a lot of variations of this continuous curve technique, and we're gonna see some of them very soon. But for right now, I'm using the basic continuous curve idea. It gives it a softer, curvier look, and returns it to the starting point, which is always ideal. Now that I have my plan figured out, I'm gonna keep going, quilting the curves in the orange and the X's in the white fabric. And if you're like me and you like the look of stitching in the ditch, this is the perfect opportunity to stitch in the seams around that center block. But of course, you can leave that out if you like. different designs with different shapes that are really going to help show off the different colors in the fabric. For larger nine patch blocks, or when I really want to show off the center fabric of that block, I love to use the quilting to create a different shape. In this next design, we're going to connect a few points to create a block with more than just four sides. But even though it looks different, it still uses the same techniques and ideas that we've already learned. In the corner blocks, I'm going to quilt a diagonal line that goes from one side to the next. Then I'll add a few more echo lines just to reinforce that shape. Traveling along the seam will help me get to the next echo line. And then when half the block is filled in, I'm gonna travel along the top of the block to get to the next corner. And I'm gonna do the same thing, quilting a diagonal line and then echoing it to fill in half of the square. And I'm gonna do this again in all four corners of the block. I'm using the slim ruler to help me quilt those straight-ish lines. However, if you don't have a ruler, no problem. What you can do is just twist the quilt ever so slightly so that you're working in a more vertical or horizontal motion. And move your hands smoothly to the other corner. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna keep going until I get back to my starting point. Now you can start to see that secondary shape come out. So I'll travel along the seam, about a quarter or a half of an inch, then work my way around the whole block, echoing the shape of this quilt in. Of course, this echo line is optional. I just like how it kind of reinforces the shape that I'm creating with the quilting. Well, once I get to the starting point, it's time to play around with different designs and really have fun with this block. In these little orange triangles I have left, I'm gonna use a continuous curve design. It's gonna curve from the outer corner to the inner corner, out to the middle and back, and then on to the next side. That's gonna move me to the opposite side of my triangle so that I can work my way around the block. 
Now in this yellow stretch, I'm going to pull the wishbone design. It helps move me across the block to the next orange triangle. It's pretty easy to quilt once you get the hang of it. I'm going to quilt the line of angles down, loop around, and back up the opposite direction. And keeping these angled lines parallel will help ensure that it's somewhat consistent. I know that I want to end towards the top of my block, so if I find myself not at that point, I'm going to use traveling to get where I need to go so I can continue on with quilting the block. I'm using this bright green thread so that you can really see what I'm doing. On an actual block, I'm going to use a thread color that blends in a little bit better. A light yellow would be perfect for this area because it will blend into the lighter fabric and not be so stark against the darker fabric. So I'm going to continue working my way around the block until I finish it up. Once I'm done with the outer part of the block, I'm not quite finished, I still have to quilt the center square. And I'm going to go ahead and do that continuous curve just to keep it nice and basic in the center. A little stitching in the ditch for good measure, and this block is finished. What I love about this technique is that you can make it as complex or as basic as you'd like. It's really important to take the placement of the block in the quilt into account because that will really determine how I'm going to quilt it. So if my nine patch is arranged so that it creates some kind of diagonal effect, like an Irish chain or some kind of grid, I'm going to use designs that help highlight that. So we're going to combine a little bit of the continuous curve, a little bit of the straight line quilting, and we're going to work through the block from one corner to the next. To help give this design a diagonal look, I'm going to start from one corner and end at the opposite corner. The dot dot quilting design will do just that. To move on to the next block, I'm going to quilt a line across to the other corner. If you don't want to do straight lines or you don't have your ruler handy, you could do the same thing with curved lines. To get to the other side, I think I'll quilt a swirl in the center and have it extend to the opposite corner. It may look totally different, but the result is still the same. I'm able to quilt from one side to the next. I'm going to do the same thing in the next corner, and I'll have part of my block finished. But once I have that diagonal line of squares quilted, I can start building off the next side. I think this time what I'll do is the same diamond design, except I'm only going to do half of the block. Okay, this next part is totally optional. I'm going to go ahead and stitch in the ditch and go back to my starting point. You definitely don't have to do that, but I can't help it. It's really hard for me to leave a seam unstitched. Now that I'm finished with that, I'm going to keep building off of this design. I think I'm going to incorporate a little continuous curve into that space that's left over. It's really going to help pull everything together. Now, yes, this is the same continuous curve we've just seen, but it just goes to show you that you can use it in a lot of different areas. The ends on the opposite side that I started from so that I can quickly work my way along a row of blocks. You can start to see how that diagonal effect is starting to happen. Now I have one last corner block to quilt. I'm going to quilt a straight line from one corner to the next and do that same continuous curve, except it's going to face the opposite direction. I can choose wherever I want that home base to be, where all the curves come together. It's going to give it a slightly different look and still help get me where I need to go on the block. I have just one little bit left to quilt. What I'm going to do is just some wishbone. Now that I have half of the block finished, I'm going to keep it symmetrical by doing the same thing on the other side. This isn't a hard, fast rule. I could quilt it differently, but for right now, to help pull the block together, I'm going to quilt it all the same. What's great about the continuous curve design is if you're worried that your curves aren't going to be perfect, throw more curves into it. Keep adding more and more curves until all you see is the overall effect. It's kind of hard to see a mistake when you have other mistakes all around it. You can really change it up and give it your own flair. You can come up with a lot of different options, which makes it a truly versatile way to quilt your quilts. And once I'm finished with the block, I have a design that really helps draw your eye in a direction. And in this case, a diagonal direction. Okay, now it's time for your challenge. If you're quilting along with me on the panel, go ahead and quilt one or all three of the designs in the nine patch blocks on the quilt. You can create your own variations or use the ones I've showed you. It's up to you. Now don't forget, in the description box below, I have a link to all the products used in the video, as well as a link to a downloadable PDF with quilting diagrams and tips for quilting these designs. 
But go ahead and get started on the quilting because in the next video, we're gonna quilt a block that's a close cousin of the nine patch, the plus or cross block. And hey, if you like this video or the video series, please give the video a thumbs up. That helps other quilters find it and helps get my video out there. Thanks so much and happy quilting.